I'm here with Amy Justice, who just finished a great pre um, a keynote presentation about HIV and aging. So I just wanted to ask you, first of all, and thank you for coming for the interview, a little bit about who you are, where you're coming from, and um, we'll start with that. Okay. Um, I'm a general internist. I'm section chief of general medicine at the VA Connecticut Healthcare System, which means that I am in charge of research and education uh, in general medicine at that VA. Uh, and I'm a professor of medicine and uh, associate professor of public health at Yale University. Uh, I've been running a study of veterans with and without HIV infection that is more than 10 years old. And the reason I started the study more than a decade ago was that I thought it was going to be very important to understand how much of aging was HIV and how much of aging was behaviors and conditions and aging process that people are subject to anyway. Um, and to be able to understand also how much is treatment toxicity, both HIV medication, but also non-HIV medication. But it's basically cardiovascular disease, fractures, um, liver disease, et cetera. All these conditions are a bit different in people with HIV than in people without HIV. Yet many of the same things that make the conditions worse in people without HIV also make the conditions worse worse with people with HIV, like alcohol, right? Alcohol is bad for liver disease, whether or not you have HIV. And so we need to understand that and understand, is it actually worse in people with HIV because their liver disease tends to progress more quickly? And it probably is. One of my questions was, because in the title of your, your, your talk today is about a nuanced approach. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, are you meaning nuanced in that we need a highly individualized response because there's so many factors that are coming together as people age with HIV? So just as CD4 cell count way back was the thing we used to figure out how people were doing with HIV, right? one marker, CD4 count. And then we had CD4 count and viral load. But we didn't really have a way of putting CD4 count and viral load together. Fortunately, they tended to do the same thing. They either, you know, CD4 count went up and viral load went down or vice versa. We spent a lot of time talking about what to do with people where one did one and the other did something else. By having an additive index, you can begin to account for what to do when one goes one way and the other goes in another direction. And by adding a measure of liver function and of kidney function, we're also accounting for two of the major toxicities that we see, right? Kidney injury and liver injury are common injuries from treatment, whether it be for HIV or for the other conditions you have, right? So by putting these all together and weighting them based on how they are related to mortality, we begin to get an understanding of which ones have the biggest impact on a measure that everybody cares about, mortality. It's not the only measure, but it's a pretty good one, right? We, I mean, we start with that, and then we're going to see how it also predicts other important measures like hospitalizations, et cetera. I don't want to look at my index. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for my index. But the good news, but may, may I just add, yeah. Unlike a cancer staging system, where really about the only thing that people tend to get out of that is what's their risk of death, there are many things in the index that are highly changeable. If you change the medications, take your medications better, stop smoking, it, you know. So the idea is that that's why I say it's like Framingham in that, you know, the Framingham index, there are things you can do to improve your index. You can take your lipid medication, your lipids go down, your score improves, right? So that's really my motivation for developing the index, that we can use it to both chart our progress and to motivate both the providers and behaviors to focus on doing the stuff that makes a difference. Well, I am so happy to be able to meet you and have a chance to um, talk to you and um, explore this a little bit more. So um, thank you very much. Thank you.